The Mighty Whites podcast is recorded at the Medicine Room Studios. For more information, visit medicineroomstudios.com. Hi and welcome to episode 17 of the Mighty Whites podcast. Uh, just a two-man power trip today. Uh, it's me, Jack, and I'm joined by Connie. Now then. Uh, Casey has just got to America and I think he's got like an eight or nine hour drive to Portland today. At least so, he's not going to get to where he needs, well, halfway to where he needs to be to be told to go home. Like I don't know, time. he is off to go see his missus, so it could happen. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh Bit of a, it was that basically, before we get the podcast started, we um, we have to really bring up, obviously there was awful news overnight, Liam Miller passed away from, I think it was prostate cancer, wasn't it? it was, I, but I it was, it was yeah. cancer uh, a couple of days ago. He was just a few days short of his 37th birthday. Uh, good career, Celtic, Aarhus in Denmark, Man United, us, Sunderland, QPR, Hibs. And went to Australia, Perth, Brisbane, Melbourne City, went back to Ireland, Cork and... Went to America to finish Wilmington Hammerhead, so I must admit I didn't know. No. But it's like, I think it's like the, 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 the their development league, but they're allowed a few senior pros and stuff, so. Fair play. But, uh, I mean, he, he, had a, he had a good career. Got 21 caps, I think, for Republic of Ireland as well. Yeah. But obviously our main memories of him are the 05 or 06 season. They wouldn't dare, would it? Mm. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I mean, it, the truth is, that season, I'm, I, I'm not going to suddenly pretend that I thought he was some world beater or something, but he, would, he had a really solid season, played 28 games in the league, 33 overall, and it was a season that we got to play off final, decent side. It was, yeah, it, it, it didn't do all spectacular ever, did he? he? just... Well, once. Well, yeah, once. But, you know, for all, he just kept it simple, didn't he? To be fair, and he say he got that amount of caps for Ireland in a time where... You know, Republic of Ireland had some decent players to choose from as well. It, the one as, you know, stunted as they are now in terms of what they've got to pick from. Um, but it's just sad news all around, isn't it? And it, it seems like he were well liked and all. Any former teammates that you've seen on social media or managers or just f- football in general just all seem to say, you know, lovely guy. So, yeah, it, big loss. It has been a, a universal one again, hasn't it? Everyone's been out talking about how what a great bloke he was and yeah and the because i knew that because he got diagnosed a few months ago didn't he, and he went out to america for specialist treatment yeah, on it and stuff yeah. but yeah obviously in take i mean it's it's a real it's a loss to football but i mean obviously it's worse for his friends and his family i mean i i, I saw a obituary of his and his wife claire he's got two sons corey and leo and a do- an eight-year-old daughter called bell 13 11 and 8 See, it's that, isn't it? It's, it's just sad, isn't it's it? It's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's awful, isn't it? It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's, it's, it's one of the horrible things that can happen isn't it? in life. It's just, it's awful no matter what it is. But when it's a public thing like this, it, it's home a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. When, at 30, you know, 36 knocking 37, it's... It's, it's properly no age, isn't it? I mean... <laughs> That's what it sounds. It's, you know, a few years' time, I'm yeah. looking at that sort of age. It's, yeah, it's... It's awful. Yeah, well, I mean, it's obviously my brother and sister are older than that. Yeah, it's it's awful, but yeah, but yeah, obviously, his sympathies go out to his family and friends. We just we wanted to talk about that before we started the podcast properly because it it's not going to go in with anything else. It'd be really we can't sit here and complain about how shit came out of war and then go into that because it no. it really does put it in perspective, doesn't it? I mean, it's. Yeah, and it, it's a game, isn't it? I know, yeah. we, I know we all, you know, for a few hours on a midweek or a Saturday, it's his life, but it's a game at the end of the day, isn't it? And when stuff like this happens, it just hammers it home. Yeah, so, uh, I was, yeah, so, best in base, Liam Miller. You, were, you had a good year for us and you had a good career. Uh, we'll go grab a beer and then we'll come back in with the podcast properly. They wouldn't dare win it, would they, Leeds? They wouldn't dare win it. Here is Rob Hulse for Leeds United. And Hulse plays it in. And Miller's hit it. It's staggering. They have won it. Liam Miller from Manchester United for Leeds United. Right, so obviously a bit of a somber note to start on, but let's get back onto it. Uh, not 
that it suddenly becomes cheerful, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Two undefeated at Sheffield United. Uh, you always think, new manager bounce, they'll, they'll be really fired up. You never want to face a team that's just got a new manager. They're always right there. One minute, 15 seconds, Billy Sharp, 1-0. <laughs> Has anything in football ever been more nailed on than Billy Sharp getting first goal in this game? No, not at all. I mean, we were talking just before we started this um, episode of podcast. I have been banging the drum about Billy Sharp now for a good few weeks on this podcast. And a good few years in real life. Yep. <laughs> Proof's there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I won't mind it. Was, it well... To be, take it all away from it, it were belting goal. You can't take it away. Yeah, we'll get that out of the way first. It was a really good finish. Shouldn't have ever got to him. <laughs> the, the cross, it were about as bad, maybe a little bit worse yeah. than the goal he scored at Ellen Road from that cross. Yeah. I actually thought this was worse, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, Kemal Roof is there with the winger. Yeah, He's got his hand on him and he just stops yeah. and lets him go past. De Bock doesn't come out. He just no. stays on the edge of the box. It's not even a good cross, but Eunan O'Kane's terrible header turns it into a good cross. Don't get me started about Eunan O'Kane's performance. Eunan O'Kane was really bad. He wasn't quite as bad as Twitter would have you believe, but he no. was. But he was pretty bad. Yeah, it's yeah. I'm going to put it down to a bit of rustiness with suspension. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, terrible header, and no one when Sharp dropped off five yards, no one went with him. No. Uh, it was infuriating. It's the same thing though. Again, I mean. You know, I don't care who manager is. Everybody knows that Billy Sharp has made a name for himself, made a career for himself, scoring goals at this level. Fucking mark him, surely. Fucking mark. It don't matter if he's small. He's proved it now in both games against us. He's punished us. If if you give Sharp the time and space in the box, he'll more often than not put it back at net. And we just don't seem to learn from it at all. You know, it's. Well, it's no accident, weren't they? His two hundred and two hundred and first goals. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, we were we were crap all at first half. Really, uh, the only decent efforts we had, we had that Lasaga one from twenty five yards that went wide, and yeah. Janssen's header just before half time. That was which was save. a really good save yeah. from Blackman. In fairness, when I've when I've seen it back um, on TV afterwards, um, you oh, see yeah, Janssen and his size of stuff. What the. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of seeing it back on TV, we should probably mention Connie uh, was a corporate wanker for. Yes, I was game. a corporate wanker. Yes, um, bit last minute, but yeah, um, through work I got corporate tickets at Bramall Lane, which I must say, in all fairness to him, pretty decent facilities. In all, <laughs> in all honesty, um, were the Sheffield United fans in with you then? There were some in with us. Um, it, 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 it would look, end of day it's corporate so but you, you, they don't jump up that much anyway no they? not really so to be fair it's a pretty decent game to go corporate really they want us to jump and shout about what no uh, one thing that did have me jumping up and shouting out in first in first half that, Lee, that Evans tackle on Alioski it was a bit weird because the first view on TV which was from behind Alioski yeah. I didn't think it looked that bad no so I, I can understand but the thing is the referee did see it because from the other side it looked like maybe a foul at most and yeah. he booked him because he'd seen it from the other side yeah, yeah. with his studs up. But that's the sort of tackle that you would, uh, you'd would see us getting red cards for. And then I know it's the whole, oh, the Leeds family is complex, but we've seen red cards for those tackles we've, numerous we've seen, times. We've seen red cards for far less than that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like you say, you can, at first glance from... You know, if 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 the, I, I've not seen it through TV playback and all mm. that, but from where we were in real time, it 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 was fucking awful. Let's be mm. honest, and um, it's. Uh, I mean, we've discussed this again at length. It just seems like now people can't tackle anymore. You get the odd few that can tackle, and then you you see some challenges now that fly yeah, in, and you te- just think, where just the technique in the tackles now? It yeah. just all seems wrong. Oh, and we're not we're guilty of it. Yeah, Berardi. I mean, God, he did. I, I were on about it to you. I forget what it against. It might have been Burton Albion over Christmas. Yeah, um, Bert, Burton Albion. We should have had one sent off each. Berardi and someone for them did one on Vieira, the one that got him right. injured for a couple of weeks. Well, I mean, the one of Berardi's, for example, right? you can't go in for a slide tackle and then your ass land on top of the ball. That's just yeah. fucking reckless, no, no matter how you look at it. 
but it's yeah, it's a bit of a woolly in trend that we're, we're seeing tackles like that more and more. Yeah. Well, uh, well, just like the last couple of games, we were shy first half, but then start of second half, we picked up. Yeah. We did it against, I mean, even against Cardiff, the first 15 minutes of second half, we picked up a bit. We were yeah. great at start of second half against Millwall. And then this, we are... Uh, I think Hernandez made the difference. He did make a great difference. I, I, sh- I should mention now. I mean, Hernandez came on just to end at first half for Roof going off. Yeah. And obviously, I hope Kevin Roof's all right. He took a great blow to the head. He yeah. might have a concussion. He knocked one of his teeth out. Yeah, he did, yeah. But it doesn't change the fact that before that, it was awful. It was absolutely god awful. Every, it, it, it the next bit... game, neither him nor Alioski would be on the pitch. No, right? definitely not at the not. start. They'd be on the bench, but they wouldn't be on the start. Roof for me were like Vieira what against Hull. Yeah, everything he tried, it just a bad day at office. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, start second half. Hernandez gets away down the left. Really good cross and a belting header from yeah, Saga. Right goal. Because there were no pace on the cross either, so he did really well to... Yeah, so he had to do it all himself, didn't he? But again, and all, it kind of shatters our idea of, you know, Pablo Hernandez shouldn't be used away from home in tough games because bring him on and he he did make a big difference. It was, even though he only played 50 minutes, was he his man at match? Because I didn't do player ratings this this week because it was our last birthday, so I hadn't actually thought about it that much. Him, he were good, Jansen were good, Pennington were good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can't. Yeah, other than everyone else was tidy at best. I would have thought. I, think, I mean, Lasaga did well with limited service. I think Viedval did what I mean. The two goals. He couldn't have done all about either at goals. No, so. and when called upon, he, he did all right. To be mm. fair to him, so yeah, there's strong argument for Hernandez. Yeah, uh, but then we get to the. I mean, the red card was a bit of a controversial one. Then you get these two. Uh, they go two one up. Billy Sharp from penalty spot, but. Was it a pen? No. You see him stop. We even saw him stop. The, no. There were a good six inch between. No. No. It, it, it's that he, he jumps and he's about f- 30 degrees over. Yeah. By the time he gets level with O'Kane. Yeah. And then he does jump into him, so he forces a contact, but it's... it was It's soft. I was more annoyed, to be honest, as yet again, and I've, you've heard me go on about this, us going to sleep from a quick free kick. It yeah. happened all the time at the start of the season. And yeah. refs, we kept getting lucky. They kept pulling it back and making them take it again. Yeah, yeah. And this one, they didn't. But the whole reason that O'Kane's having to tear ass across is because every player is asleep. Yeah. And just gives them a free run. There's an argument there, then, is there not to say that some of it's got to fall at Gianni Vio's fate? Uh, well, yeah, if they're not switched on at set pieces, especially yeah. if it's because they're having to... Uh, They've got such specific roles that they have to fulfil that they're having to focus on that instead of keeping an eye on the ball. You know, if that's if that's his sole purpose to come in there and train set pieces with squad, you know, yeah, it's, it's he has come to, to him. Up. But uh, I can tell you what was a damn sight more of a penalty than the one that they got. That handball shout at the end. It was shocking, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but I can not he, he is only five yards away. So if it got volleyed at him full speed, yeah. I would go... Uh, maybe no. but the ball's slow and looping he's got so much time and he just misjudges it sees it going to the side view and just sticks his arm out it's I've, blatant penalty I've said it in the past when, when I played I would have sent it half and I'll always argue a defender's case whether it's against Leeds or for yeah. Leeds or what but if someone get, like you say if, if someone had ran up and hoofed that ball and it, it seemed you can't give that. It's you know, yeah. but when when a player just makes an obvious movement and it wasn't even like it hit him like up no, near it, his shoulder no, it it with his elbow. Yeah, it was it was his you know, elbow forearm. Like, yeah, it was, it was just but and the reaction. Did, oh, I, w- I was just about to say, did you hear Don Goodman? But no, you got a freebie. Yeah, uh, it was really funny because he was on his usual. Oh, let me guess, it wasn't a penalty. It was on his usual claiming he's a Leeds fan while simultaneously absolutely hating Leeds United and everything that they do. Yeah. But he uh, he obviously got a word in his ear off a producer or something because <laughs> his first thing was, ah, there's not much in it. And then they showed it again and he was like, and you could hear him really seriously looking at it again. It was, <laughs> <laughs> I think someone's gone in his ear and gone, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, come on, come on, Don, now you take it piss, mate. <laughs> but it's... Um... Yeah, and you could tell by, I mean, I think it were Hernandez, 
I think it was. And the minute it hit him, they were in. And oh, there was I think the Saga, they there were was going mental. The four players who were nearest the ball, all immediately. And I won't mind um, the reaction at Sheffield United players. It was oh, that sheepish shit. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. they knew the penalty. Yeah. But okay. again... But, we can only put we can we can sit here and bang on about shit refs or decisions that aren't gone or not. But but yeah, the bottom line is we didn't play very well. Yeah, and yeah. that's the main thing. I mean, you know, obviously it's Hacking Bottom's first game. He's not going to fix any of the problems overnight. Yeah. Uh, but I was hoping that we might be able to sneak something. Just, I, I say, you never play a new. Any time a club has a new manager, you always think we're going to get something in that yeah. next game. So. But uh, not that you, the, I mean, it's not in any way a comfort, but the only good thing for me is I do get five points in predictions. Fair play. Because I had two on Sheffield United. KC gets two because he had one nil and you had a one-all draw. Guess I'm not bottom. Jesus wept. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> Connie, 42. Po- after 35 matches, Connie, 42. KC, 44. Me, 53. Cool. But the thing is, the end of season stuff is worth that much, but it could oh, yeah, change all, all that anyway. Let's face it, Casey's shout for Sunderland to go, oh, Mike, that's, that's going to knack him. That's it, mate. We should take him the 50 points off. <laughs> Are we going to do it like they did on Top Gear? Yeah. <laughs> Just knock off the exact amount of points that he has. <laughs> yeah, that'd be the way to do it. <laughs> well, obviously, we've mentioned him, but... Uh, just uh, the morning after we finished recording the last podcast, they did confirm Hacking Bottom as we expected. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised it was only an 18 month contract, but I think with managers, that's probably a sensible decision, to be honest. Yeah. Especially at Leeds United. Six months is um, it's optimistic, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so to end the next season, he's, it's weird because he's brought in Jamie Clapman as his assistant, who you weirdly referenced in the last podcast. When, yeah, we, were ta- when we were talking about that Malik Wilkes goal in the 23s, you said, I. Either he's really quick or, we, or he was running at Jamie Clapham. <laughs> <laughs> and then he immediately I just, comes in. I just, I mean, don't get me wrong, he was a decent player when he was at Ipswich in his prime, <laughs> but I just can't see past when he rocked up at us in League One. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's also brought his performance an- analyst, Alex Bailey, and Nathan Winder as head of sports science. Now, he's the interesting one. Uh, have, have you ever been on that training ground dot guru? I've not, no, but I hear it's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's really good. And uh, Simon Austin, who's done a load of work for BBC, all of that stuff, yeah. he wrote quite an interesting article about Nathan Winder coming in and his pro- and his processes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it had a, f- a lot of quotes praising him from Tim Gabbert, who's like, he's based in Brisbane, but he's like one of the top five, like, sports science guys right. in the world right. he's worked with everyone Man City Barcelona that stuff bloody hell uh, it's actually and, Chelsea on here as yeah, well yeah and he yeah. was a to, and he had a quote saying that he really rates Nathan Winder and he's very pragmatic and he's done really good work at Barnsley fair enough so hopefully because we've had a few times where we thought players looked knackered yeah and where yeah. they didn't that seem up, so hopefully he'll be able to get me more of that. Maybe he'll be able to get it so Lasaga can be a 90-minute player instead of a 70-minute player. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he he also gave an interview to Sunday Times last year that was linked to in that article. Mm. And it said that, like, he gets his players to fill in a daily wellness questionnaire. That, right. And he's got his own app that he's made to analyse the results of it. And stuff. Right. So it sounds... It's not what you expect when you get someone from Barnsley. Is no, it? not really, no. <laughs> But yeah, the, uh, it was that, but and it's a good thing for the championship because he was on about having to play twice in three days, twice in four days. Yeah, he said playing twice in three days is an onslaught. Recovery and sleep are massive. It's about maintenance, rejuvenation. If a player tells you he's stiff or sore, has had a bad night's sleep or anything, you've got to listen to him. Hmm. It's a holistic approach to getting the best out of players. And apparently, like, and I wonder if this will get brought over that if win or lose, if Barnsley played. Mm. when they had two games in three days they weren't in the next day I can see it logic yeah, in they it. Think yeah. it they think it's they stayed at home the day after matches and then the next day they wouldn't train until about half eleven to make sure that they got loads of sleep and I can I, yeah I, but, I can see a logic behind yeah. it yeah I mean I, uh, I don't know loads about it I've done you know I, I've read enough bits of sides and done A levels and stuff so hmm. there's the odd little bit but the sleeps thing really makes a lot of sense making sure they get lots of sleep because that is when your body does most of its recovering it's it's not only that and all like I say especially if they've been playing away as well and travelling back and stuff like that it's 
It sounds simple, really, doesn't it? But when you actually have it put there in front of you in black and white, you just think, well, actually, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, I think there's there's too many people in football that will overanalyze stuff and try mm. and fix a problem that's not there. Mm. But if you just break it down and look at it as simple like that, you can see a logic, definitely. Yeah, it was it was just like it said, like, it was on about when, they, say, you have a couple of weeks where you play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. You know, it was saying we would we could often have an entire week pass without a full training session ever taking place, just light sessions just to keep them, just to keep yeah. them ticking over sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, you know, these are professional athletes now, and in this day and age, they they have pre-season to get themselves up to peak fitness. If they get injured, they've got the best of the best to help them with recovery. They've got dietitians. They've they've got everything they need to keep themselves at a decent level of fitness. And if that's mm. the case, yeah, making sure you don't overwork them could be the right mm. thing, definitely. But it just I just found it interesting. Uh, there was also I haven't included all from that, but there was a full interview with that Tim Gabbert that was quite interesting. If you just if you just Google training ground guru Tim Gabbert, you'll find it. It's it, it's quite an interesting website. I like it quite a lot actually. Uh, well, having taken their manager and half their coaching staff, it's fair to say that Barnsley's fans and Barnsley themselves aren't very happy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know we said on last podcast, one win in 16 and you, without being big-headed, get a promotion. Yeah. It's, on the face of it, it doesn't look good, but then when you sit and you think of some of the players is lost mm. at Barnsley. Yeah, Bre- Breen, Molson, Stones, Hurrahan, win all. Yeah. Um, As I, I, actually, I yeah. didn't actually see Villa and Birmingham today but apparently Hurlihan scored a great goal yeah I've heard it was meant to be a scream I know Snoddy <laughs> tweeted about it <laughs> that's how I know um, but yeah it's um, they, they all seem to rate him highly enough mm. but it's like I said I don't think he's here so we're back in yeah, simple as that I haven't actually got him in front of me but I know they're quote it's Con Cannon then tries to smash up the studio. Apologies yeah. for that. Connie walking around, knee and everything. Cheers. Uh, yeah, I'd, it was um, a bit of a strange one, the quote, the way that they did it. It was like, oh, we were very angry and disappointed after working so hard to secure his targets in January. And so he said just four days after he signed a new contract, which he also mentioned in his press conference. It won't. He signed it like two and a bit weeks ago. Yeah. It just didn't get announced until then. But and there was... It was a very passive aggressive step. <laughs> yeah. Not only that and all though, but you know, I know if it were the other way around, we've had it with oh, players and that past, we'd, we'd be pissed off. Yeah. But everyone knows that contracts aren't worth paper to written on now in football. No. It's well he did say a similar thing actually. I said it was the eighteen month contract a problem. And he went, No, all of all of contracts really worth is the settlement fee yeah. when it gets when you get sacked. Yeah, that's all it is. It's now if a player or a manager wants to do something, ultimately they'll do it. Unless Even they're, they're called Riyad Mahrez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, ultimately they get the wrong way, don't they? Yeah. And it might not happen straight away. Look at Coutinho. Yeah. It, they might have to wait six months, but it happens. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're there we worrying about hacking bottom and having Christensen before it. It makes you think back to headier days. And did you see that Dave Hockaday is favourite for the Swindon Supermarine job? I'm going to He's put it going out. home. I'm putting it out there now. That man will have that club in the Champions League in 10 years' time. I'm <laughs> telling you, he is the man to do it. He's going to be in the glory days back. Yeah. Him and Junior Lewis. Yeah. He already <laughs> did uh, uh, like an, a job at Swindon Supermarine. I think it was like a consultancy thing. And then all the staff left because they had no money. So he did the assistant's job for like a few weeks. I might well have been for free. And his current job is head of male football at South Gloucestershire and Stroud College. He was Leeds United manager a couple of years ago. <laughs> it just tells you everything, doesn't it? I mean, we're sat here having a pop at Dave Ockerday. Oh no, I, every me. single one of us would have said yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say, it'd be, like, it'd be like someone walking into this room now and saying to me and you, I'm going to pay you both 100 grand a year. Fancy having a crack at Leeds job? Yeah, yeah. give it a bash there, why not? <laughs> what qualifies you for this job? Absolutely nothing, but you offered it, mate. <laughs> Listen, we've got we've got Leeds back to the big time on Football Manager countless times now, come on. <laughs> I'd be willing to bet that Dave Hockaday couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still, 
it'd still have um, my man Billy Sharp sat there and it'd yeah. still persist in playing Steve Morrison. Yeah. Which, by the way, coming on to start, well, I'm going to go oh, on a tangent oh, here. Is a this bit. after the game? The video. Yeah. What a knob. But he hates him. He, I know he claims that he, Van and stuff, but remember at Wembley after we got promoted and he was slagging all their fans off? Yeah, he hates him with a passion. It, but you just think. I get it when he's talking about adults that are just yeah. behaving like They were all kids and there was about four of them. Just yeah. like give them a high five or something as you walk past. Even the steward looked as if to say, really? <laughs> Fucking yeah. hell. You know, it would have been nothing for him to just put his hand up and give it that. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I'm sure that, I mean, I know that there were people on Twitter mentioning this, so there was enough people for me to assume it's true that he does quite a bit of charity work and all of this stuff. Mm. But I said, that was a that was the move of an arsehole. Yeah. And I already don't like him, so it didn't take much. But it, it, it was... Just, it was the air of arrogance about him as he walked off and all. Didn't even, it just imagine blinkers being, on. Imagine being that... If you're that arrogant, if you are as much as it would piss me off, if you're like a world-class player... If you're the Guero, Yeah, I can understand uh, you having arrogance about mm, you. Look at Ronaldo. But if you're uh, Steve Morrison. <laughs> former Leeds winger, Steve Morrison. <laughs> you just, oh, oh, well, seeing as you've brought that game up, I'm amazed that Neil Warnock didn't actually stab that left. <laughs> yeah, he. <laughs> when he blew a whistle when Bamba scored that over a kick. <laughs> I'd, I'd have let it go just for the fact that Saul Bamba scored an over a kick. <laughs> Well, 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 we've mentioned Steve Morris and Neil Warnock on the subject of massive arseholes. El Adjou announced he's planning on running for president in Senegal. I've literally found this out two minutes before we started recording this, and I'm still not sure how I feel about it. In a way, he'll suit politics because he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah he said something like it was. It was planning. He had already planned on going into politics, and he was looking at being an MP. And then George Ware got president of Liberia, and his aims got higher. And I was like, yeah, but you're their lad's juice, and he's George Ware. Yeah. <laughs> Although saying that though, he was on Pele's hundred best players of all time. Was Hell I bet Jew. George Ware was as well. Possibly so. Stephen Gerrard won't know. <laughs> I was just going to say, do you reckon he'll get Gerrard in as foreign secretary? Like that? <laughs> yeah, that'd be an interesting pairing. God, they really hate each other, don't they? In fairness, I can get why Gerrard hates Juve. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Gerrard's a guy who assaulted a DJ because he wouldn't let him DJ, but compared yeah. to Elad's Juve, he's a really, really, really nice bloke. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. Ellis Juice, I've said it before, he's a man that when he won at Rangers, he made the old firm Derby even more controversial. Yeah. You know, that's 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 special, is that? <laughs> yeah, and then after all the appointments were done and everything, we'll come back on to actual League United stuff now. <laughs> uh, Phil Hay had an extended interview with Adrizani where he got three or four articles out of it. But the main things were, first of all, uh, Radrizani apologised for the mistake of appointing Christensen. Which I didn't actually think there was that much of a need, that there was any need to do. No, if if he does think that, I know, I know Cholino apologised when he hired Hockaday. Yeah, that, that there an was apology. a need. That was there was a need for that. There yeah. was a logic behind getting Christiansen, even if it didn't work. I mean, the, people can say what they want about him and say that <clears throat> excuse me that he managed in poor leagues and you know, but everyone said he equipped himself brilliantly in an interview. So if he thinks that. Keep it behind closed doors. It, it makes him sound a bit, you know, mm. sounds a bit bitter, really, doesn't it? Yeah, I haven't got it in front of me, but uh, Christensen did tweet something out, didn't he? Saying bye and saying thank you to all the fans and everything. I think, yeah, he just... I just think, it, if I'm honest, I think it was too big for him. Yeah, well, uh, Radrizani did use that exact quote somewhere, said that the job was too big for him. But in terms of him as a bloke... Mm. Lovely bloke, you can't knock him. I don't think there's any Leeds fan that will turn around to you and wish him any major ill. No, he, <laughs> yeah. uh, to be honest, Radrizani, it was a bit of a burial, really. Uh, Radrizani said said that Christensen failed, quote, in terms of communication, leadership and confidence. <sighs> I mean, that's... <laughs> it's, it's damning, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a fairly damning indictment. <laughs> to me, it was also that he said he wanted to sack him after the first terrible run. And a couple of times since then, and apparently it was Victor Orta that was the one who kept telling him to stick with Christensen. You see... Which is just going to make people go, well, he can't judge a player or a manager then. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But it's... Um, I'm, I we're going to come to this with Christensen. You know, he's saying he lacked in uh, terms of leadership and um, 
confidence. How much? Well, I know it's it's a rhetorical question, but how much input did Christiansen have in that team? I think Victor Arta carries far more clout than what anyone had. He's letting on. Yeah, yeah. There is a quote about that later on, but uh, yeah, he he said that it was there was two main things that he had to go at. The, just the Newport game itself mm. apparently really pissed him off. But it was the four matches in eight days around Christmas. And he was saying, well, we've got a fairly big squad now, use them. And he didn't. And we were saying at the time that yeah. we expected a lot more changes than we got. I think the Burton game were the one where we all watched it in pub, didn't we? Yeah. And we thought there were going to be, like we were saying, rest ailing. At yeah. time, we'll say maybe give click. There you go, KC. I've got him in for you. <laughs> give <laughs> him a game. Hashtag click watch. Hashtag click news. <laughs> <laughs> he has actually tweeted today about Utrecht. I think they've won today and I saw yeah. he liked to tweet. I must say, it <clears throat> does show the sign of some a football with not much confidence. He's been retweeting compliments. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> and I mean, I've done that with the podcast, but we've got 800 followers. and <laughs> Yeah, we're not, damn, we're not professional athletes. Yeah. <laughs> But, We're trying to get people to notice. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, mind you, well, maybe he's just trying to get Otter to notice. Hey, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's um, it's got a it, it's got a valid point for that. Yeah, in maybe not using all of his squad. Yeah, um, one of the things he said was that our overall budget for wages were about hitting his limit. He didn't say that it's... But the thing is, it's not because players want too much money, it's because there's too many of them. Right. He was saying, now we want a smaller squad of like 20 mm. with the youth players coming up. Yeah. So he's like... It, I haven't got the full quote for it, where he was basically saying we have kind of had to overload the squad this year just because of the holes in it, and now it's to see who stays. Yeah, I see that, but if he's... Oh, it's not the best, it's not necessarily the best way to do it. Not only that and all, if he's saying that his overall view for the club going forward is that he wants a smaller squad with some youth players in and around it, there's arguments then for Andy Lonergan. Why would he button? Yeah. You've got Peacock Farrell there. Yeah, we didn't need... Um... Why, you know, fair enough, we signed De Bock, but... Why was Anita bought in if we were going to use him in defence when you've got Tyler Denton there? You've yeah. got Louis Coyle at full back. You've yeah, got, you could have not... You know, yeah. so on the one hand, yeah, I agree with what he's saying with that, but then you think, well, hang on a minute, Christiansen doesn't negotiate contracts, that's entirely up to you yeah. lot. He just trains them. And you've got the one of the best academies going, yeah. you know, use it. Yeah, uh, one of the things he said was, before he bought the club, Leeds' projected loss was 7 to £9 million per year under Chileno. Uh, the turnover's up, but the wage budget is also up this year. He says it's up by £7 million per year, which sounded high, and then I went 134 grand a week. It, I think he might be slightly exaggerating, but I can see how it'd be close to that. I mean, if the under-23s, all of them, if they're all on 600 Two, two and a half, three grand a week. Yeah, Anita will be on big. There's a lot of players oh, will be yeah. on decent money, and it probably does add up to that. Because even though we got the transfer fee for Woods, for Wood, before Wood went, his wage wasn't actually that high. Well, no, when we he'll s- have been fifteen to twenty. Yeah, when we signed him, he were his stock were quite low, wasn't it? Yeah, really, let's be honest. So I think, although that might not be an exact figure, it's probably not far off. Yeah, again, you can see why it's going to be around there, can't you? Maybe if not quite that high. Mm. Um, the, the, can Phil here asked him about the auto stuff, because obviously the fans were all saying it, so he asked him, and he said he is happy with Angus Kinnear and Victor Arter. Uh We could crucify everyone for every mistake, which is his way of saying, don't get me wrong, Victor Arter, that's his way of admitting Victor Arter has brought some players that were oh, a yeah. bad buy. Yeah, so yeah. at least he didn't like say... No, all the players he bought are amazing. Yeah. He did say that he's happy with the squad, but I think that's more of a confidence thing than all else. Yeah. Uh, he said, continuity is very important. We have an example at Brighton. That's the model to follow. Mm. Not many teams get promoted on Brighton's wage budget, and also because they're near London, I'd bet their wage budget was higher than ours. Definitely, and not only that... It won't be, like, Wolves level, but it's... No, not only that, but because, as you've said, it, it shouldn't be a big factor but it is you know if we're competing 
they have got that character dangle, aren't they? Mm. Foreign players especially seem to go for that, don't yeah. they? So, they can, yeah. well, you can live in London and come down. And... Yeah. But no, they're... Uh... And the, the last thing was after Hickenbottom said that he would still like to try and challenge for playoffs this year. Which, I mean, he's got to say, really, hasn't he? Yeah. If, if he's but, coming uh, in and admitting defeat. Yeah, but <laughs> one, good, one good sign for maybe he's tempered his expectations a little bit. But it's not the end of the world if in first year we're not in the playoff. What's important is that we have foundations and we understand which players deserve to stay here and be part of the group, be part of the dream. It's very Gary Monk. <laughs> <laughs> be part of the group, be part of the dream. Shit, we're going to live the dream again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said that's normal. It takes time. Oh, he also said that he will come up with a new that they will come up with a new crest that everyone will like. No, you won't. Oh no, there'll always be someone. Yeah. Even if they went back to just plain old LUFC, someone no, would not like there's it. There's going to be people. He, he, he said that he still likes that crest, but if everyone hates it, fair enough. So. <laughs> Best thing you can do with that with, with that crest is offer it to the supporters' trust and say it's time so, for a revamp. So they can turn it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best thing that can be done with that crest. Yeah, so having gone through all of that, what do you reckon to his interview? Because I'm guessing you probably read parts of it before that anyway, but... Um, we, we, Andrew Downey, I'm mm. talking. At least he's had the decency to come out and admit that he may have made some mistakes. I, well, I not even may have, he's admitted that he did. I respect him for it in a way, but I think for him to do it as publicly as he did with a bit out of line and a bit I think, harsh. The, I think the Christiansen stuff was a little bit needless. Yeah, it's it's done and dusted. He's gone. Just That's thank it. him for his time coaching at Leeds. Yeah. Good yeah. luck in the future. Just have a bit of decency about it, but uh, let's face it, up, up to press, I see people online saying it's one of the worst seasons we've ever had. No, it isn't. Well... No, I could. I can't understand how anyone could <laughs> no. ever think that. It, I've seen a few, and you just think, to be fair to the man, he's coming this summer, it's Barter's ground, fair enough, he's two appointments up to press. There's question marks over Eckingbottom, there, there were massive question marks over Christiansen, but the here, so we've got to give it a bash and see. He has spent a lot of money, to be fair, comparatively compared to what we have been doing. Mm. Um... Plus, I think some people seem to forget the outlay that he had for Ireland Road. Yeah, he sold wood, but he still made a decent yeah, outlay. Well, if the club was projected a seven to nine million pound loss and wage budget, it's gone up seven million. You that's, can't. That's yeah. that's wood. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's so. I think overall, I agree with most of what he said. It's just the whole. There's a couple of points, as I said, over the squad size and using the academy players, which I, I get. But then I think if that's your model that you're wanting to go for, do it in or do it from the off. Then save wages. Then if you are getting a smaller squad, you can use them wage funds or put it towards transfer budget and get better quality players. Mm. Um, and the Christian something. But other than that, pretty much all right, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of promoting players from youth groups. Uh... The under twenty threes had a bit. I'll mention now because I haven't written it down. I think the under the under eighteens beat Burnley four two. Uh, IVS the day before that Edmondson that we got from York got a hat trick. So, uh, but the under twenty threes beat Forest under twenty threes five one, and Forest haven't lost in ten games in under twenty threes league. Uh, admittedly, they had a run in the middle of that where they drew five in a row. So it's not like they've been battling everyone, hmm. but it was a pretty good result. And everyone who watched it, and I've for once I actually got to see. The game. I heard about it, I would at work. Yeah, uh, for once I actually got to see it, we played really well. There was some real nice football played. And, uh, I mean, it, it was 5-1, as far as uh, Ian Hart's concerned, it was 3-1, because he doesn't count the goals from Ray and Balboa. To be fair, <laughs> he, should, he, should, he shouldn't count it either from Tom, El Rancho, or PSC. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to come on to, because having watched that game... Uh, not I, I know that it's rash, and but for the Bristol City game, I would start Tom Pearce. Yeah. If you don't want to give him the... Because he can play left back or left wing, I wouldn't start him at left back. I'd start him on the left-hand side. Right. Because uh, I'd drop both Ruth and Alioski. If someone's fit enough to play right back, I'd play Dallas one side, yeah. Hernandez at 10, and I'd play Pearce on left. Because... Honestly, in that game, the way he ran at players, his set pieces were great. His set pieces set up the first two goals. The fifth goal, beat two players, made it into a box, cracking finish, and had a couple of good efforts before that where he beat his man and had a good effort. I thought he looked 
easily like he should be involved. I've not seen enough of him to really comment. Everything I have heard of him has been nothing but good, um, but I've not really seen it. I'll be honest, I haven't seen a lot of under-23s this season, I'll yeah. be honest about it, but everything I've heard about Pierce seems to be good. So we've got an history for doing it, so if they're good enough, they're old enough, isn't it? It's yeah. that old phrase, isn't it? Get them in. It's the most <clears throat> impressed I've been by a performance in a youth team for Leeds since I saw Ronaldo Vieira. Fair enough, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can't argue. So that. I would, at the very least, he should be on the bench with an actual view to coming on rather than making up the numbers. Yeah, uh, That's what I do. And speaking of the, uh, you think Cal, uh, Callum? I don't actually know if it's Nisal or Nisal. I think it's Nisal. Right, I could be wrong. I've, only, I've never heard anyone Niesel. say it. I've only seen it written down. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but he's been called up to Republic of Ireland under nineteens. Now he's one who again who I've heard a lot of good things about. I've never actually seen him play. I've he's one that I, I know less of. Yeah, I've, I've never seen him play, but again, everything I've heard is good. And yeah, if he's getting called up to, and he's getting international recognition already, yeah, fair enough. See how it see how it pans out. Yeah, we'll see it's, how it goes from here because obviously Eogan played in that team. So. Yeah, he's a midfielder, isn't he? If I remember mm. rightly. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and lastly, not really Leeds related, but it is uh, about three hours ago, Larry Grayson, yeah, new manager at Bradford. I said in the last pod that's who they should get. We thought it might be Hannes Wolf because of all the connections. Yeah, but that's we said that's who they should get, and they have done. It's um, yeah, I saw a tweet about it and all. The first man to manage Leeds, Huddersfield, and Bradford. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, the Bradford fans are fucking delighted. I bet they are. He's a, he's a cracking appointment for I know that he's never, he hasn't always been the favourite person because he's been managing all the rivals, but the second they've got him, they all seem really pleased. It's not only that, it's um, he's got a track record in that league. He, he knows it inside out. Every club he's gone to. When he went to Huddersfield, they were failing a little bit. Yeah, they dropped to, they'd only dropped to like fifth or fourth or, that, or fifth. Yeah. But it just started really going wrong. It was after they had that 65-game unbeaten run where they went down. <laughs> yeah, I, I, an Uddersfield Town fan I, I used to work with banged on about this. Oh, we're unbeaten in 50-odd games. I went, hang on a minute, you lost the playoff final in that. Yeah, but that doesn't count. Well, it does. It's probably the biggest game that you had within that run and you got beat and you started it in fourth and ended it in fifth. <laughs> it's 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 not like Arsenal's, is it? <laughs> no. But I, I wish them both well. But I've, I've, in a weird way, I think we're all the same. I, I think because of Mark Young, friend at podcast, yeah. and his dad, I, yeah, I've, I've, I've never had any malice towards no, Bradford I've al- at all. I've always, I'd, I'd quite like Bradford to come up. When they were in Premier League, and then us to beat them about eight 0 Like in Premier League, when we <laughs> didn't. <laughs> them. <laughs> but all in all, though, I've got no malice towards them. I wish them well, and obviously, I wish Grayson well. Mm. So, yeah, good luck to them both. Nice yes, to see I did up. see a picture on Twitter that shows uh, the progression of Simon Grayson with his hairline. Turning into Warner. He is turning into Neil Warner. <laughs> that's what the tweet then. I went, oh, God, he is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what GFH did to him. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, it, this, obviously, this has been a bit of a quicker podcast. One, with there only been two of us, two, only one game to talk about going, only one game to preview. Yeah. We did most of us manager stuff on the last one. So, uh, this coming Sunday, TV again. Uh, Bristol City at home. Pfft, tougher. Yeah, they're sixth in league, 52 from 31 games. 3-3 uh, with Sunderland, lost 1-0 at Bolton, 2-0 win over QPR, 0-0 at home to Derby, lost 1-0 at home to Norwich. Uh, and in between that, they got beat by Man City in League Cup, 5-3. Uh, I'm kind of hoping the confidence might be rocked, because yesterday, awful, yesterday 3-0 up against Sunderland and drew 3 all. I know I've mentioned it in previous podcasts. I have got a token Bristol City fan at yeah. work. Who I, and, um, me and him have got a bit of a bet on this season to see who will come above Owen League. It's looking a bit it's dicey at the great. moment. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but either way, so there's a bit of back and forth every mm. weekend. And um, obviously, he knew our result before they kicked off. Yeah. And when I looked, when I got home, saw the 3 0 up. Like, here we go, Monday morning. Mm. And then by the end of it, it is, it's been very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I've already said I would I would definitely be playing uh, El Gigante. 
yeah. in this game. Yeah, no, he got to. <laughs> Ian Hart's going to be cursing us somewhere. <laughs> Even fans are adopting it now. <laughs> God bless him. No, well, uh, but I would. Sh- I'm not sure how much will change really. Uh, their team is a team full of solid. Uh, fielding in goals decent. I, did, I knew that Aidan Flint had got a few this season. I didn't realise he had seven. No, but he always chips in, doesn't he? I know. God, I know, but it's only February and he's a centre half and yeah. he's got seven. <laughs> Joe Bryan, who we were strongly linked with, yeah. along so with Aiden, Flint. Aidan <laughs> Flint, strongly linked, been really good. Joe Bryan, strongly linked, been really good. Scott Winner against Scum, which helps. Ryan Kent, linked with. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Kent, they've got him on loan. they got him back end at last window. Yeah. Uh, Corey Smith and Marlon Pack are pretty solid in midfield. Yeah. Uh, and the front two were both in all right form. Diadu's got like eight or nine this season, but he got two against Sunderland. He's been injured and all, haven't he? Yeah. yeah. And Bobby Reed's got 12 this season. Now, the lad I work with. They've got that Matty Taylor as well, haven't they? Yeah, they yeah. have. The lad I work with, he can't sing Bobby Reed's praises highly enough. Yeah. He thinks Doesn't he's he, brilliant. Or, he also, like, is it that Icelandic guy? Is it Mag- Magnussen um, or something? Yeah, the defender. Yeah. I can't remember Magnuson his name. Magnussen or Bjarnason. Something like or that. Or something like it? that. His name's gone. He, he raves about it. But Bobby Reed, he loves him. He's, he's, he, he goes as far as to say he thinks he's their best player. And he goes down when he can, sort of thing. Yeah. But he, um, yeah, he can't sing his... And he's chipped in with a few goals as well, I think, as Bobby Reed this mm. season. So, a bit tough one. Yeah. Well, for us, we switch. I'd say we switched to a 4-3-3. But we didn't really, because Phillips was doing that thing again where he was yeah. bombing on and trying to get right up there with Lasaga. Yeah. Uh, so it, it sort of was a 4 2 3 1 again. Yeah, pretty much because of what Phillips yeah. was doing, which. I have to admit, like, I mean, we'll, we'll talk more about it now because we sort of went for it before. Because what changes would you make for this game? Because there's so many options, <sighs> formation wise, player wise, there's loads. <sighs> Do, do you know who have, have we got anyone else back up to press I know Sai is Sai's back after yeah, this si, this is Sai's last one uh, Berardi is he back yet Berardi's was two games because it was his second red yeah so he got sent off against Cardiff so he's still got one more yeah, he's got one more uh, Liam Cooper He's still out, I think. He's still got one more, because his was yeah, a four-game ban, because it yeah. was a second straight red. Yeah. Um, do you know? I don't know. I really don't know for it, because I'd definitely take Alioski out. Yeah. We oh, said definitely. this last week. He's... But just because I didn't mention it before, and I saw a few people on Twitter saying that he had a good game, and I couldn't disagree more. I thought De Bock was fucking awful. It was OK forward, defensively. Yeah. When he was getting forward, he, he, he was putting some decent balls in, to be yeah, fair to him, and he was working well on overlap. But the defensive stuff, I thought, was terrible. Yeah, the stuff that we pay him to do, yeah, it was awful. The, um, in fact, I didn't really mention it enough. The ta- the It wasn't just on that first goal. Mm. We allowed him so much time to cross the ball all game. I'll tell you what, we're woody, uh, we're, yeah, out wide, but the amount of times they got the ball, 10, 15 yards in our, in our half... And they were allowed to turn and run. Yeah. And even when they turned, they had a good 15 yards to run into. That's a bit worrying. Mm. Um, you know, I know they're on a bit of a downward, downward spiral at the moment, but they're not up there for now. They're a decent team. Mm. And, yeah, it's a bit worrying. But, yeah, getting back to Debark, going forward, he looks solid mm. enough. But... I, still, I, still, I wouldn't drop him, but he was, no, no. He was poor in that game. Um, getting back to who I'd, who I'd drop, I mean, the suspensions and the injuries are dictating yeah, a hell quite, of a lot it's of quite moment. limiting. Um, Alioski, I'd look at bringing him out of it, and Phillips, for me, I'd take him out of it. Phillips had a poor game, yeah. as did. You see, I thought Phillips was every bit as, as bad... Every bit as bad as O'Kane. It's just O'Kane's mistakes were higher profile. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It, so it ended up, he was one that got the majority of the stick that I thought because he was doing that bombing on thing mm. I put something on Twitter where he was bombing forward to try and get a little soga but was ineffective up front mm. and because he was bombing on forward he was ineffective in the midfield as well yeah we're leaving a it massive just, gap yeah. yeah so if if he was going to say no we're going to go 4-3-3 and free up 
the whoever's playing on the wing to be more of an attacker because alioski has been having to work back too much mm. when he's in that position. I mean, he hasn't been playing well and I won't play him in the next game, but no. they're having to drop in a bit more. So if we actually played three proper centre mids, then your outside centre mids can drift out to cover yeah, a little bit. Yeah, cover, yeah. Like it's, in real defensive situations. Yeah, if needed. Um, yeah, I, I mean, to me, though... I would be, and if we do that, if we did go flat but free and centre mid... I'd be seriously tempted to play Anita in there. Yeah, I would. I'm glad you've said that. Because I won't want him as part of a two, because I don't think he's big enough. But as part of a three... Yeah, it's fine. It's part of a three. He could... He, for me, as part of a three, he'd be your one that'd do all your nitty-gritty sort of stuff, intercept loose balls, Mm. you know, maybe get a foot in every now and then, but you'd be looking for, like, Vieira or Kane or whoever else. I'd probably go... Anita Vieira and Phillips. See, as much as I thought, for, as much as Phillips was part in that game, I think I'd just because them two are the more defensive minded one, mm. I'd probably put Phillips in there ahead of O'Kane for that. But. See, I'd, I'd go, I'd stick with O'Kane to mm. be honest. I, I, I can put that down as bad as it was, I can put it down maybe to a little bit of rustiness. Mm. But not, Phillips, had, to... Phillips had just had two games out as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. But, For something less stupid. <laughs> well, yeah. But, yeah, if, if Anita's playing in a three, mm. then he's your one that can maybe look for that ball or the the one that, like I say, he'll intercept the passes, break up play, you know, just little things. The one thing is, if we play an eater there, then that definitely means Dallas stays right back. Oh, you definitely yeah, have to do. Well, there's no one else. <laughs> no, no, definitely. And to be you honest... Know, unless, unless they out of nowhere decided to play, wouldn't it? If yeah, any of the kids. youth players were going to come in, it'd be Tom Pierce and he's left-sided, so... Yeah. And to be fair, I don't think Dallas did a bad job. No, he was he fine. He was one of the I'd better performers. Six, six out of ten, you know, yeah. just he did fine. He did, yeah, he did. He went about his business. If we actually had, had a right back, then I would have played the right back. Yeah, and, and then I'd play Dallas, Dallas. on the wing. And I, I still, I still, the more I think about it, the more I think I would play Pierce on the left. I don't think he will. No. Like, what I actually think it'll be is nearly an unchanged team. Yeah, to be honest, again, I think I think the wingers will change. Yeah, possibly, but the, the it's like we've said, the suspensions and the injuries yeah. are dictating it a hell of a lot, aren't they, at the moment? Yeah, I think Vidal will be in goal. I think back four will stay as Dallas, oh, yeah. Janssen, Pennington and, and Debock. Yeah. Vieira, Vieira will definitely stay in. It might go Vieira and Phillips and play Hernandez as an actual 10 because he came on and did so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if we played three centre mids, if we played three out and out centre mids, mm. then I would probably play, because then you'd have to play Hernandez from the left even though it's not ideal. No. Because no. he does have to be in the team, I think. Yeah. So, Especially when size isn't available. Yeah, if, if we played there. three out and out centre mids, you'd have to play Hernandez from the left although it's not ideal. Yeah. And then you'd, And then I'd probably play... I mean, I, I don't really want Roof or Alioski or Sacco. God, how bad was Sacco when he came oh, on? Oh, God. Jeez, we nearly missed that, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> he, he got ball and it, it was just classic Sacco. Got it. That beat one his where Ekiban made that run and yeah. he just kept dribbling close and not playing the pass and not playing the pass. So Ekiban had to stop and then played it 10 yards away from him. And he put a cross in. There was that one and he put a cross over to La Saga. It must have been about. Six oh, foot over his head. I was really laughing at that one. It, because be fair, I, I, I said out loud, because I actually watched this game, my dad had, had to disappear, so the last ten minutes I was watching it with Benny. Mm. Another friend of the podcast, you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, we were sat there and I went, right, because he actually did quite well to get into the position. Yeah, he did, yeah. And I went, oh, well done, Saka, right, great, great, good ball in now, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> and to be fair to the Saga, he nearly kept it in, didn't he? <laughs> you, you saw him running after it, and I, I'll be honest, even at that point, I'd have just thought, do you know what, bollocks to that. You know, <laughs> winger and you can't cross a ball, piss off. <laughs> yeah, but I, that's a real, it's a real problem area, is wings at the minute mm. and to be fair because of the injuries and what have you it uh, the, you know a it couple of months ago we were saying wingers <laughs> fine yeah <laughs> but yeah it's I mean I, I wouldn't mind Anita right back Anita right back so that Dallas can play on wing yeah when you look at it now it's probably 
yeah, the more I'm, sensible option, really. Yeah, I don't. It? I don't think it will. I think it'll stay Dallas, but I really won't mind. I'm. I'm glad they haven't yet because I think it'd be a really stupid move. But I'm surprised they haven't brought Coyle back yet. I think now that January's done, we might not be able to. Possibly, yeah. I think that we have the option, but I'm not sure if we have... I don't think we have the option now that the transfer window's shut. Don't get me wrong, even if we have got the option, I think it'd be a stupid move. Especially th- now that the season's... Pff, it's not done, but it's unlikely that we're going to... Let's face it, if we don't pick up it next two or three games, it's done. And we've got... I mean, I, th- I mean, we're not going to do previews of them, but we've got Derby and then Wolves and... Yeah. It's a if, tough one. If we're coming out of that and we've got two points... Season's done. We're not going up. We're not going down. It's just same old, really, isn't it? It's we we reverted back to how we've been for the last nine years. Yeah. So we're really not sure. Year. We're really not sure what the team will be, no. especially seeing as we're doing this one like a week before. Yeah. Just because work and KC traveling has very much got in the way. <clears throat> uh, but I guess finally is the predictions. Uh, KC did send us a message. He's going two 0 leads. Fair enough. I, I admire his confidence. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say we draw one all. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> so, yeah, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, and I think if you offered me that now, I'd snap your hand off for it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 1-1, uh, one, one. Aidan Flint from a corner and La Saga. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> The Aidan Flint thing, I'm not gonna back. I'm not gonna back against it to be <laughs> honest. Now, now I know how many goals before, he's got. You know, before game, I'm gonna check what his anytime price is. I'm not gonna back it because I can't bet on someone that's got <laughs> against Leeds. But it must come in and in and in. It must be priced up like a fucking attacking mid by now. <laughs> 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 It'll be like fourth favourite for their first goal score. It'll be like Deiru Reed, Matty Taylor, Aidan Flint. <laughs> <laughs> Like us last year with Bartley. Yeah. You always look like Bartley were like fourth favourite. You think, eh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I remember it used to happen with, it used to happen with uh, Brexit means Brexit, Ian Hart. Yep. <laughs> Quite a lot because it's set pieces. He used to be really low. Ian Hart borders Hart. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. Is that his MMA name? <laughs> it's time, okay? <laughs> you know. Oh dear. Yeah, I think this is something that's just going to be a standing joke now, isn't it? With it. Mm, yeah, it seems to have stuck. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so two one alls and he's got two nil leads. Cool. Uh, well, this obviously this will be much shorter than the last one because last one was like an hour and fifty or something. Yeah, yeah. really long one. Wasn't but it, you yeah. know, end of the transfer window, new manager, all of that stuff. But yeah, uh, that'll do us for episode. As he looks at his piece of paper, <laughs> seventeen <laughs> of the Mike White's podcast. It's all right, we can edit it out. It's fine. No, leave it in. <laughs> Fuck it. It's not worth. It's really not worth it. Uh, Oh, I do want to mention, actually, the last episode, we had a bit of an upturn in the number of listeners. And I know that some have just been looking for someone to listen to talking about the new manager and stuff. But uh, we also had a lot of people messaging us and stuff. So I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that was listening and giving us feedback and stuff. Uh, in this one, we, we did, by the way, uh, if anyone cares, someone did message us on Twitter saying that the quiz bed is annoying when we do it. Ah. I have no strong opinions either way. So if anyone out there does have a strong opinion on whether we should bother with having a quiz bed or not, by all means, let us know. We are not proud. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, I prefer it with the quiz bed, but it doesn't really matter. So if, if Speaking the, of the quiz, for obvious reasons, we haven't got one in this week, but we will have one for yeah, next week. Next time he's back, we will yeah. have one. But yeah, that'll do us. Episode 17, uh, we're at Mighty White's Pod on Twitter. The stuff we write goes up on for it altogether, which is at THIU, it's all L-U-F-C. Uh, we'll be back after the Bristol City game and hopefully we'll be back to a full contingent. It, we should be at a... KC schedule should be all sorted by then, so we should be able to do something. Yeah. But for the meantime, I've been Jack. I've been Connie. Cheers. Uh, thanks very much for listening. Bye. Bye.